it's very striking that we believe in a Savior, God made man, who comes to teach us the way to the Father and only shows us one prayer. Of all of the scriptures that we have and the words of Jesus himself, you'd think that he would give us any number of prayers on how to best convoke and invoke in ourselves the Spirit of God. Instead, of course, he only gives us one prayer. And the beautiful thing of that prayer is that it's the prayer that seems to accompany us time and time again anytime we gather as Christians to pray. Right before Mass, we prayed the rosary, and six times we invoked our Father. In a few minutes, we're going to be celebrating the Eucharist on this altar, and we'll all pause to speak in one voice the beautiful prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. There are some in, the church history, in church history who would say that even this prayer, the reason we say it so often, is because it summarizes all prayer. Summarizes every aspect of what we may desire and everything that we may, we may want to speak to our God who is in heaven. You can take word by word meditating. Even Ignatius himself in the spiritual exercises will ask those who approach to want to learn to pray to take every single word of the Our Father and pray with each one every word for minutes, even hours at a time. For example, our. Why is it our Father? What does that mean? It's not just my Father. Father, why Father? Why not just God Almighty, but Father, intimacy and relationship? What I find most striking, though, is that when we pray the Our Father, at least when I pray the Our Father, I don't really think about anything. I just sort of say it because it's kind of what you do. You pray the Our Father because that's what Christians pray. My brothers, if we stopped and reflected on these words, we would probably be a little bit more hesitant to pray what Jesus asked us to pray. In particular, there's one line that stands out to me in the Our Father. Father, forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. I almost want to say, Jesus, you should have stopped while you were ahead. Because with that first part, I got you. Yeah. Father, forgive me my sins. Full stop. If it stopped right there, I think we would all be at ease. But instead, Jesus goes further and touches the real problem, I think, deep down in each one of us, is that we want to be forgiven. But guess what? We don't really want to be people who forgive others. We, I think, instead, kind of want to be like Jonah. How many of you guys maybe have said this in, under your breath or in your own mind? What does Jonah say? Jonah became angry that God did not carry out the evil he had threatened to do. Do you hear that? Jonah, the prophet of God, was angry because God didn't work evil on his enemy. I think in my life, that's often how I react when someone wrongs me. I'm upset if God doesn't punish them for the wrong that they've done me. But notice, unlike Jonah, Jesus speaks a word of forgiveness and says, you want to be forgiven of your sins, there's only one path. And that path is that you too must forgive everyone that is in debt to you. My brothers, I'll tell you, being a young priest, I have learned so much, even in a very brief time, about what people experience in their own sinfulness. And I think one of the lessons from the confessional that's very striking to me is that there's a certain kind of insanity when people go to confession and confess the sins of criticism and judgment of other people. And I just sit there kind of chuckling at the irony because this person is kneeling before God, begging for mercy, and they have their hearts closed to offering mercy to the person that they can't stand. And I often remind the penitent, I say, how ironic is it that we ask God to forgive us and to not be so hard on us, to not judge us so strongly. Please, God, don't criticize me. And then in turn, what do I do with my brothers, with my neighbors? I do the same. My brothers, very soon we'll celebrate this Eucharist on this altar and we'll pray these words of the Our Father. May that petition be one that's said with a little bit of trepidation because it puts an obligation on our shoulders. If we want to be forgiven, we have to be ready to forgive others too.